so. Um, great. So this part of the session uh, is divided into two sections. We're, first of all, we're going to ask you to reflect on technology enhanced assessment and uh, what that means to you and the opportunities and uh, we have some guiding questions that we're going to ask you to engage with over VBOX given that we've got quite uh, a reasonable sized group. Uh, and then the second part is over to you. We're going to ask you to contribute to Open Educational Resource, our set of exemplars um, on technology enhanced assessment. And uh, we will have some spot prizes to keep you going and, and keep you working hard uh, throughout that piece. Um, but just in terms of, of reflecting on um, on technology enhanced assessment, as we Rob and I were um, were reviewing some of the literature related to technology enhanced assessment, and we realised that the like we have an innate uh, understanding of the term, but we thought it might be interesting to throw it out to you and see what you um, what technology enhanced assessment means to you. So I'm going to ask you uh, on a different um, window or a different uh, device, if possible, to log on to vbox.app, which is how we're going to manage this um, reflection piece. And the meeting ID is there on the slide as well. Thank you. Um, I think it was Fiona Pop V Box in there. That's brilliant. I'm going to leave that slide up for a moment just while you get organized. Um, guys, and I'll set up my, my V Box to go. Brilliant, thank you. And maybe what we might do is if people, when they're logged into the room and they can see the first question, uh, you might just give me a thumbs up or um, some little signal in the chat box. That would be brilliant. Excellent. Yeah, that all seems to be working. I, um, I can I can certainly see the first the first question is open. Uh, and the question is, what is your understanding of technology enhanced assessment? And we have a little space where we can where we can type in a response and then hit send. Great. Thanks, Rob. So it'll be interesting now to see. We'll, we'll, we'll give you a, a minute to do that. And it'll be interesting to see now how aligned are our understandings or, or how diverse are our understandings of, of technology enhanced assessment? This is always uh, interesting and i'm just trying to share the screen here so uh, just bear with me a second guys uh, i'll stop sharing the slides for a second suzanne and then you can share uh, an application or a screen okay yeah brilliant i think i can do it here is this it? can you see that okay bob yeah, that's coming through. We're seeing the, the dashboard of Evox, great. Okay, so using digital tools to aid in assessment, assessment that uses technology in some way. Supported, yes, that's, that's a really good point. Mostly it seems to be te technologically supported assessment. It's not often that I see enhancement. Yeah, I would agree with that point. I, I think that we need to be really careful uh, about throwing out the term technology enhanced assessment but for want of uh, finding a better term and uh, that's the one that we're using at the moment but I think that's a really important point. And another really important point there, assessment that uses technology to improve the quality of feedback and reduces repetitive workload on educators, another really important point. Yes, and similar point there, enhanced assessment by tech, not just re replicating existing practice. Excellent. Um, okay, 
some very important points there. And uh, what we'll do is we'll pop the the results of those into the the slides later, so that you have a reference point. And if we have some um a moment at the end of this, uh, we might open up the mics for discussion as well if we do have time. Okay, so moving on to the next um, poll. Um, how can technology enhanced assessment or technology supported assessment support the development of digital competencies? And I suppose you mean here student digital competencies, Suzanne? As student, yes, uh, and I guess staff by, by staff, active. I suppose, yeah. yeah. Um, can you see that okay there, Rob? Yeah, I can see that, and I can see uh, on my phone here, I can see now that poll is open, and I have a small little text box where I can, where I can respond. I see we have one, one, one uh, contribution in so far. Students need to develop digital skills to engage effectively. Digital and assessment literacies are intertwined. Yes, very interesting. Very interesting. And actually that point there using a variety of formats useful in the workplace was exactly what we found in the student focus groups that they need um, to develop some skills that might be considered soft skills like presenting to video using Excel, um, et cetera more authentic and there's uh, something that actually we're going to be asking you about in a moment but more authentic assessment technologies representative of the workplace and uh, I think that's a really important point as well. I like the idea of incorporating formative assessment. You know, very often we don't uh, pay an awful lot of attention to formative assessment. Uh, we kind of often focus very much on summative assessment, high stakes assessment. But uh, and I know this is this came out a lot in our discussions with our with our participants in our program that ongoing low stakes or or no stakes formative assessment using digital technology is a great way to build in and scaffold student um, sc digital skills development. Okay, sorry, I've done something with this that um, I'm not sure how to fix, but um, I'm going to we move can, on yeah. to the next one. Yeah, sorry, Rob. Okay, the next one then, um, it's already come up in, in some of that um, discussion, the, the first two questions, but the question is, what can uh, technology enhance or supported assessment offer in terms of authenticity or authentic assessment. And I guess um, drawing on one of the points uh, previous there, authentic assessment, you might consider authentic assessment something that will transfer to the workplace. Um, more clearly than 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 the traditional types of assessments, digital literacy definitely linking back to the competencies. I like that piece there now, reflecting the workplace software or the digital skills in practice. I think you can't get more authentic than that. You know, um actually using technology in a, in a formative or summative assessment um, exercise that is the same kind of, of, of technology or the same kind of skill that students would be using in in, in the workplace yeah and that's definitely, you know incredibly authentic yeah there's an interesting point there as well um education can use video or audio feedback to deliver a lot more personalized feedback in a short time that actually did come up in, in our focus groups as well. Um, that, you know, if people are not using video and audio as much as we'd like, and that the tone um, 
uh, the tone and the kind of the expression when using video or audio feedback. Generally at DCU, it's audio feedback. Uh, and our colleague in the Teaching Enhancement Unit has done a piece of research around audio feedback. And, and definitely students are very responsive to that tone. Uh, and it lends some authenticity from the other side uh, of the, the assessment experience. So that, that's, that's another interesting one. Uh, I'm going to move on and um, open our next one. I just thought this might be interesting to spark some ideas, particularly in terms of uh, all of us facing into uh, unknown territory in the next semester. Um, uh, just what kind of ex I, I think. I think. Yeah. Sorry, Sorry right. Suzanne, to cut across. I think I think this this particular type of question, uh, you, you you just enter 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 one word. So you know, what did you use? Uh, you know, video uh, or portfolio or, or something like that. Yeah. Just might spark the uh, the yeah. imagination as well for our next piece of work. I think video is coming through an awful lot, uh, which I, which I think is uh, is to be expected. I know certainly in DCU there was an increase in in the use of video as a type of assessment. Uh, people also saying journals and portfolios. Yeah. Phone conversation. That's a really interesting one. And there's just a, a point in the in the in the chat there. Someone saying open book exams. Yeah, I think we saw a huge pivot to open book exams in, in the recent in recent months. And I know you know one anecdote I I came across in DCU was from from a, a language teachers who uh, traditionally would set you know a written exam. Uh, to test students' language skills, and um, they pivoted towards um, video assessment and portfolio assessment, and it was uh, transformative for them. And it, it's they're going to keep uh, keep on COVID or no COVID, um, they're going to keep 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 those new um, assessment modes. So I think I think there's been a great opportunity in, in the recent crisis as well. Definitely. Okay, we might close that off and I wonder where it might work out play. Yay! So video video and portfolios coming up um quite a lot there. The phone conversation uh is capturing my imagination and I'm, I'm wondering what that's about. If, if if the person who put that in would like to take the microphone and be really interested to hear what that's about. Um and then lastly, our final um, question for you is, how do you think that technology um, supported or enhanced assessment supports academic integrity? Or do you think it does or not maybe? Or what are the opportunities there? Hmm. This could be a can of worms now. This is going to be an interesting one. Yeah. Um, um, I suppose this could be interpreted in one way. Uh, uh, it supports academic integrity uh, because it can be more authentic. You know, it can be more more challenging, uh, less less easy to to duplicate or to or to pass off to someone else. Um, but it can also, in some ways, depending on your assessment method, I suppose, technology can actually make it make it very easy to cheat and plagiarize. <laughs> so, yeah, I've seen some great examples coming in here now. Double marking. Excellent. Processes are transparent. Transparency can be can be great. Yeah. Use of rubrics. Analyzing the effectiveness and the validity of questions based on responses, error rates. Yeah. These are, these are some great, some great, some great ideas, some great contributions. Randomized MCQs means different questions for students. Yeah. Mm hmm. Some great ideas coming through here. Plagiarism, yeah. 
uh, and I like that comment. It allows you to break out of what's the right answer assessments um, and sparking some innovation. I think that's a very interesting point. Okay, just because time is a factor, I'm going to close that off. But thank you for your contributions. That was there was a lot of um, very valuable um, uh, in there. And uh, again, we'll add those to the slides at the end of this session. I just need to go back and uh, share. Go back to slide. Share the slides. Um. Okay, brilliant. And stop sharing and then i wonder rob would you go would you share the slides again i'm not quite sure yeah, where that out. yeah. thank you and let me just find the slide in question so what we want to do now is this slide here great there you go okay i'm just picking up on um somebody that calls themselves tiro manny um sorry if i murder in your uh, the name there a uh, phone conversation it was for a student who had been struggling with man mental health for two terms covid19 just made it worse student could not cope with yet another powerpoint and uh, the conversation supplemented other submitted work i think that's really really innovative that's so interesting and thanks for for um for your uh, i think I, th I think it also shows a great a great sense of care um you know just 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 cutting through the processes and and and, and the status quo and just showing care for the student and, and picking up the phone and having a conversation to discuss their their uh, their their coursework and so on i think i think it's a nice simple but, but powerful approach that it, it, it's excellent i think that that's so interesting and uh it would be great if you um, contributed that to our crowd uh, sourced uh, open education resource. So I know time is against us, guys, and uh, I think we have a, a, about 10 minutes or 11 minutes to, to get cracking at this. But uh, what um, we want you to do now is spend some time having a look at our open education resource and hopefully. Uh, contributing some to um, to the the document as well. Now, just to say that we, we don't um, anticipate that you'll have completed the template um, in the ten minutes that you have, but we certainly would encourage you. We'll leave the the document open for several weeks, and we'd love if you came back to it and just edited away at your leisure if you're interested in doing so. Um, but it it looks just from the discussion um, through Vivox, it looks like there's lots of, of rich kind of ideas uh, and things that you've used. Um, so we'd love if you contribute to the document. But the rationale for um, creating this in the first place is obviously a lot of academics wedded to traditional forms of assessment. They had difficulty conceptualizing alternative uh, or imagining new assessments. And we felt that a, ba a bank of exemplars or case studies could support uh, them to get get moving down that path. Um, we took a crowdsourcing approach because uh, I mentioned earlier that while we do have some excellent um, uh, examples from our own university and our own circle, uh, drawing on community knowledge, we really needed to draw on a wider community knowledge and experience. And obviously that will make the, the resource richer. And why do we create an open resource? Um, well, for the reason above, uh, you know, we're stronger together, um, gathering different ideas from different universities and different institutions is going to make the, the, the document richer. It aligns with our teaching enhancement unit open practice and it allows for continuing development um, and evolution of the resource. So at this point, um, what we'd like you to do is to open the collaborative document. Add a bitly thanks, Rob, you've popped it in there. You see it on screen as well. So if you can open that and just take a look at the document, um, what we're suggesting is that maybe take a look at one or two of the examples. You'll see that there are 20 exemplars at the moment there. And maybe have a look at one or two of them to to get an idea of what's involved. 
we've got 11 headings for each exemplar. Obviously, you're not going to get that completed uh, in, in 10 minutes. But what we would like you to do is um, when you've had a look at, at the, a couple of the examples, if you intend to add an example yourself or an exemplar yourself, to pop your name into the heading um, of the um, at the top of the page, so you'll see that there's there's now 16 blank um, templates there, and if you pop your name into the top, it's a it's a yellow tab on the top. And uh, I might just uh, try and share that now. Mm -hmm. Share screen. So I can see lots now are viewing the are viewing the Google Doc, which is which is great. Um, so as Suzanne, you know, there's 20 or so exemplars there to begin with. Have a look at them to get a sense of 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 what's included in it, and then there are plenty of blank spaces at the at the end of the document. Yeah. So starting from number 21, and what I'm suggesting, if you can see that screen there now, is beside exemplar 21 that you might pop your name in if you intend to use that template just to avoid confusion because um, it's obviously a shared document uh, working document there um, yeah so and um, we're here for any questions if you have any questions we're just going to dedicate the rest of the session to 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 this piece of work um, to keep you going we're going to have some spot prizes and we have a little challenge for you uh, in terms of the, the, the spot prize uh, and what our challenge oh. yeah thank you i've got it uh our, oh. <laughs> sorry uh, our challenge for you is to include um three words in your exemplar care complexity and competence and because we've only got a few minutes left, we're, we're going to um, allocate the spot prize uh, in a, maybe at the end of the week on Friday. Um, we'll take a look at it, and um, I think that's the fairest thing to do because you're you're unlikely to get one in the next uh, five minutes. Get all three words in there. Um, but yeah, so we're we're just gonna leave you to have a look at that. But please feel free to raise your hand and take the microphone if you have any questions or pop a question into the text box. Um, we'd welcome that. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, and thank you to Fiona as well for for facilitating the the, the session. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Suzanne.